Now that we've gone through the basics of sheet editing, I want to do a quick run through of the different types of blocks that we have available, just to give you an idea um, of what's available to you. So first up, we have the spacer block. This is really useful just to make space for things, take up space on the sheet um, and help make the layouts work nicely. Very, very useful block, reach for it often. Um, you can also set a background color um, for this block. So, you know, if you wanna like, you know, have a big chunk uh, of the sheet be, you know, a certain color, you can use the spacer block with a background color to do that. Um, next up, we have the header block. Header is uh, very useful just for a header, a big piece of text, you know, on the sheet page. So I'm going to say, you know, all blocks. Short text, um, I showed you before, you know, you can set a label here. This is very useful for just specific inputs. And then in this block, you can again set this to either be, re you can set this to be read only in game if you want, which means that it won't be editable, um, which is great for putting in just like a short bit of rules text. Um, and you can also add this button. You can also use uh, this thing called toggleable long text. So this, for instance, let's say that this is like, okay, this is the, the you know, the look of a character right then maybe you want to put a short description here but you want to give the players more space to sort of describe what's going on by turning on toggleable long text it enables this little drop down here which when you hit it has this like hover over pop up here where i can type in all the details about looks and things that i want um so that's a useful little feature for this type of for just like adding more additional details long text same similar thing. It has a read-only in game, um, which you can use to uh, uh, set up just a big piece of rules text. The number block. This is great for just like anything on the sheet that just has like a number value. Uh, you know, we could imagine this would could be like level, right? Um, and most of the settings here have to do with these arrows. So I can set up either I can you know set to to hide or show these arrows. Um, coming in a future release, we have a, a more compact style of arrows where it's just these little like up and downs next to the number input, um, and that's on its way. The image block you can use to upload uh, an image to the sheet. So for instance, I took a screenshot of the heart header image. So if I wanted to add that to our main sheet, I could just you know add an image block, and wow, suddenly we have this nice uh, heart, the city beneath, uh, header image directly into the sheet. Uh, after the image block, we have counters, which I showed off before. It's these counters that can be filled in. Um, like I said, you can connect this to health. You can invert the health. Uh, you can also swap the direction. If you swap the direction, then it'll be filled from right to left instead of left to right. You can also change what the counters look like and change the number of options there. So you have the list block, which has these check boxes, great for equipment or things like that. Um, the select box, um, in this, it is a drop down select. So you can, if you go to the block settings, you can add options here. So I'm gonna say, let's say that this is, uh, you know, what's your favorite color? I'm gonna say this is, you know, blue, red, green, yellow. And then so when this is on the sheet, the players can choose from this list of all the options that you've added here. Um, you can also select to let them you know, choose multiple things here. So let's say, okay, I want my favorite color to be blue and green. You can set that up. Um, and you can also uh, add a toggleable long text, just like for the short text block that we showed earlier. This has adding more details here. We use this, for instance, um, to like select your background on the uh, uh, Blaze in the Dark sheet. The table block. Um, in this, you can add, a, a, you know, this is a regular sort of table. It has like different headers you can add. So like, let's say you can, you know, you could use this to like keep track of equipment, you know. Um, uh, so, you know, you have like your crossbow and it, you know, weighs five pounds. Um, you could use this to keep track of equipment or things like that. Um, in this, you can change the number of columns that you have here, um, add or take them away. 
Um, you can also, it has a bunch of options here for like coloring, you know, if you want to do like alternate row coloring, or if you want column borders or row borders or no borders, um, or you can change the color of the borders. You can do also all of that in uh, the table view in the styles menu for the table block. After the table block, there is this stats block. Um, this is useful for setting up stats in your game. So by default, it has this sort of uh, uh, blades in the dark view, um, but there's a bunch of different, uh, by changing the stat type here, we can change sort of how this works. So for instance, if we want a modifier block here, you know, then this is just turns this into like a number input. Um, you know, I can say that I have a three in this stat and negative one in this stat, etc. cetera. Um, or we can do the D&D &D sort of rules where this will then, if we say that we have a, a this will work by you put the D and D like ability score here, and it'll automatically count, you know, calculate the modifier here. So here I have a nine, you know, a thirteen in strength, and a, you know, nine in dexterity. It'll calculate those modifiers automatically. Um, you can also add a block roll here. Um, this is used in the Forge in the Dark system. Um, so it just adds like this counters up here and then this block roll which calculates something based on uh, the values of the stats in here. On these stats, you can also add a roll here by selecting a stat roll type. So I'm going to select, uh, let's say, d20 here. And then if I click this in game, it'll you know take the value of the modifier if I'm using the D&D block or if I'm using the modifier, it'll just take this, the, the, mod the value placed in here. Um, and it'll generate a role using that. Uh, these role types are determined in the back end um, based on the role types. Um, we'll probably have a different tutorial on editing role types, um, but for right now, we have a few set up in there, um, which is like PBTA D20, Forge in the Dark, or just like a 1D10. So that's a stats block. Next up is the HP block. HP block, um, you can similarly uh, connect it to your character health. Um, and then if you do that, this will show your max HP, this will show your current HP, you can edit this in game, and it'll uh, uh, change your, it'll control your HP uh, in game as well as reflect any changes in game. Next we have the feat list. Feat list is great for um, adding just like, you know, a, when you have like different abilities um, in game, uh, like a long list of abilities. So for instance, this is built, you know, styled off of the like Blades in the Dark feats. Um, so you can add all your different like abilities for your class here just by clicking plus, you know, adding different options here. Um, change the name, change the text, change the, uh, you know, the hover text here. You also, uh, there's this send in chat button. So basically what this does is that if you, you know, fill in this with the ability, then in game, you can hit the send in chat button. It'll take uh, all the text that you've written into the feet and automatically send it to the chat, which is why this is so useful for different abilities and things like that. In these options, you can change the number of checkboxes that are here. So for instance, let's say you're not playing a game that has like selectable abilities. You can just change these to just be bullet points instead. Or let's say that you're playing a game where you can only use certain abilities a certain number of times per day. You can add these checkboxes here to uh, basically reflect that. So you can keep track of, okay, I've used this four times. You know, I've used this twice. I haven't used this at all, et cetera, et cetera. After the feet block, there's this clock block. Um, this is for Forge in the Dark games. Um, so you use it for like the healing block. But this basically just adds a, a clock that fills in as you click it. Um, you can change the number of segments here. So I'm going to change it to six segments. So as you can see, it's filling in. Um, that's the clock block. The action list block is up next. This is a block that we built for the D&D sheets. Um, you can define different actions in here. You can add a two hit and a damage um, uh, here. The way that this damage works is that uh, basically it just rolls whatever you type in here. So you know you can type 1d6 plus one, it'll change, uh, and then it'll roll that when you click it, et cetera. You also, in the action roll, you also can set up an action roll here, uh, which will, um, roll based on your two hit, whatever you put in your two hit here. And there's a note section, which is just some text. So this is the skills block. 
Um, this is another thing that we built for 5e. Um, by default, it has like this drop down where you can select like, okay, what is the stat based on the skill? You can add your modifier here. You would it has this button to say whether you're proficient in it or not, and you can add, you can keep track of your proficiency bonus up here. Um, this is something, this is the uh, advantage toggle. Um, so if you wanna like roll a skill and you wanna roll with advantage, you can select, you know, advantage here, or this is neutral, this is uh, disadvantage, and it'll automatically add that modifier to your roll. After the skills block, we have this harm table block getting a little bit crowded on this sheet. I'm just gonna keep moving things down. So harm table, this is used for Forge in the Dark games. It's very simple. And the last block that I'll be showing you right here is the status block. Um, the status block is a very useful little block just to keep track of all the statuses that are on your character currently. So when you have this sheet linked to a character, if you have a status here, uh, it'll show up as a little icon and a hover to show you more info on your sheet itself. The last two blocks here are the sheet block and the deck block. These are used to embed other sheets within your sheet. Um, I'm going to do a, another tutorial on views, and uh, in that I'll show you, I'll walk you through how to embed a sheet in another sheet, but for right now we're going to leave these be um, because this tutorial is long enough as it is. Okay, I think that's all that I'm going to go through right now. Thanks so much for watching, uh, and good luck with uh, making sheets. Again, if you have any questions as you're going through uh, editing and making your own sheets, feel free to come into the closed beta chat and the feedback chat. Let us know what's going on, um, and we'll try our best to help you out. Um, and yeah, thanks. Hope you have fun.